Hi, I'm Jason Hahn with Outdoor Photo Workshops. Welcome to our latest video on waiting. This is one in a series that we've done on nature photography tips and techniques. You can check out our videos, articles, and our latest workshops around the world at OutdoorPhotoWorkshops.com. So recently I wrote a pretty lengthy article on getting in the water, taking your camera, your very expensive gear out into the water, and the ways to stay safe with it. Quite honestly, water and cameras is a pretty scary idea for a lot of folks. Taking this thing out into salt water, let's face it, if you drop it, you've got a very expensive doorstop. There's no coming back for it. So why is it worth the risk to get out here and wait around in the water going after critters and, and landscapes? There's really three main reasons that we, why I spend a lot of time out here being wet. Approachability, access, and angles. For all the animals that I see out here, uh, birds in particular, what I've found is over the years is that I can get a lot closer to these animals uh, from the water than from the land. There's something about when I'm in the water, they just seem to accept me a bit more, and that allows me to get quite a bit closer to them and gives them a comfort level. One of the big things with nature photography is we never want to stress our subjects. We don't want to cause any kind of harm or stress or, or cause the, the animals to get off of their normal patterns. So I'm very careful to pay attention to their body language, and I found from the water they're much more comfortable with me. They let me into their world, let me see things that normally I wouldn't get to see, to get those really intimate, in-your-face type uh, photos that I really like. The other reason is angles. When we're in the water, we can get lower. Because really, with nature photography, the, the key is eye contact. We really want to get down to the eye level of the, the subject that we're working with and really get into their world. The water allows me to get a little bit lower, get down to their level, and really draw you in with, into the photo. The other reason is access. Some of these animals, you're just not going to find them anywhere else. You can't go to the desert and find an alligator, or if you do, it's going to be a very dry, unhappy alligator. This is where you're going to find those species. You're not going to find them anywhere else, and really, to get your best photography, you're going to have to go out there and get into the water. Now, going out there isn't without its dangers, and certainly that's the last thing I want to suggest is that you go out there and, and get yourself into trouble or, or damage your gear. You have to be very careful. And the key really is slowing down, taking things at a, a very slow pace, a very deliberate pace, and really thinking about everything you do before you do it. Gear is also very important. You know, you, you don't want to go out there with the wrong type of equipment. I'm not suggesting that you need to go out and buy thousands of dollars worth of gear to go in and, and get wet, but the right gear is really important. First off is the tripod. Tripod is very, very important for getting out in the water. Number one, it's going to support our equipment. End result is you're going to end up with sharper shots. It cuts down on fatigue. Wading is a resistance exercise. Every time you're walking through water, you're fighting the weight of that water with your legs. So you're going to get tired. Not only that, but we're down here in the Florida sun. So we've got sun, we've got humidity, we've got bugs, we've got all kinds of things draining you. So anything that you can do to help relieve that fatigue is good, and a tripod is key for that. The other important part of that, this tripod, is this going to act as my feelers. It becomes a part of me. As I'm moving through the water, I can use it as a, a walking stick and feel for obstructions and things out ahead of me. So it's a super important thing to have a good, sturdy tripod. A flimsy tripod is as bad, if not worse, than no tripod at all. Unfortunately, I've seen folks out here with a very poorly made or uh, tripods, only to see that tripod collapse and dunk their, their gear, drop it into the sand. The next part is dressing for success, so to speak. You want to make sure that you're wearing clothes that are going to be good in the water. I prefer wearing long pants, shorts or long pants, it's really up to the, to the individual. The reason down here in Florida I wear long pants is the potential for jellyfish, the potential for walking through mangroves and cutting myself up, the potential for running into sharp things underwater. Pants give me a little bit extra protection and also give me a little more protection from the sun. The other important thing is, is, the, is the footwear. Footwear is really key out here. Uh, I see folks wandering out here in bare feet and flip-flops, and that's a really good way to get yourself cut up. One of the main injuries out on beaches is uh, cut feet, stepping on shells or broken glass or any of the things that may be littered around the beach. Out in the water, it's even more uh, potential for that to happen because you can't always see where you're putting your feet. And it's very easy to step on something sharp and cut yourself up really quick. 
I prefer a amphibious sneaker or a water shoe, something that's closed toed and drains well. So that allows my feet to be comfortable all day long. They're protected. Um, a lot of times I also wear a liner sock underneath of it. Now granted, it's not the most comfortable thing to get a wet sock, but the, the socks help protect you in case you get something inside your shoe, which may rub and, and cause you blisters or, or cut you up. The other important things are, of course, sunscreen, bug spray, um, I prefer long sleeve, breathable clothing, uh, something that protects me from the sun, but also wicks away sweat and makes you feel a lot more comfortable. Because the sun beating down on you, reflecting off the water, it can make for a long day. Now, giving you all the dangers of the, 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 the sun and the, the water, the other thing to keep in mind is that there are things out there that can trip you up, make you fall. You have to, as I said, just take things slow. <clears throat> as we move out into the water, we're going to be very deliberate, planning a step at a time, looking where we're going. We're not in a race. You know, it's very easy to see that bird or dolphin or, or sea turtle off in the distance and go, wow, I've got to get over there and shoot that right now. You can't run through this stuff. And if you try to go too fast, you're going to get yourself hurt or you're going to dunk your gear. And as I said, we don't want a very expensive doorstop on your hands. So as we move out here, we're going to take things very slow, plan a step at a time, and use the tripod as a feeler. In addition to having the right footwear and the right clothing, there's some other important things to keep in mind. I always bring a pair of polarized sunglasses with me, partly to protect my eyes. Again, long-term sun damage to the eyeballs. As a photographer, your eyes are really super important. But what polarized lenses will allow you to do is see a little bit better under the water. They get rid of the sheen across it, and as you're walking through here, you'll be able to see a little bit better. Now, the other important thing to talk about is how do we get our gear out there? One of the reasons I started using a belt harness like what I'm wearing now is because of going out in the water. This is Think Tank's system, and I find that this works really well for wading. Number one, it's water resistant. The, the, the materials here will keep the, the water out of your gear if you happen to get a little bit deep. The other reason I like this is that as I get deeper, I can cinch things up, I can move pouches up, I can do all kinds of things with it. So I find for me this works a lot better. Backpacks don't really work well for me because I'm going to have to, if, when I need something, I've got to take that backpack off and I have nowhere to set it out in the water. Also important out here, again, I can't stress the sun enough, uh, is to make sure that we stay hydrated. Lots of water all the time, uh, especially in the Florida sun, but no matter where you are, it's really important to bring water. I see a lot of folks come out uh, here and other places, they say, oh, well, I'll get something to drink when we get back to the car. Well, you may be gone for hours and you can dehydrate very quickly in not too high temperatures. It doesn't take the Florida sun beating down on you to, to cook all the water out of you. So that's very, very important to stay hydrated as well. Uh, as we get ready to go out, one of the things I wanna make sure is I don't have stuff in pockets that is gonna, could potentially get wet because I may have water up to here. Again, if I do have anything in here, I wanna take it out, put it in a bag, or if I don't need it, leave it in the car. And that brings me to the next point, is simplify. You don't have to bring every single lens you own out here, and it would be really better if you don't. Again, you're gonna be walking through water, resistance exercise, if you have 40 pounds of gear with you, you've gotta carry all that through all of this water. Plus, all that extra gear is gonna throw off your center of gravity, gonna make you not be able to balance quite as well as you normally can. And if you step in a hole, you're going to have to, to quickly adjust to that and having that extra gear on you can throw you off. And if you actually do go in, you certainly don't want to ruin every lens in your, your collection. Now, one of the things that gives me peace of mind going out here is carrying a good insurance policy. And I'm not trying to, to be an insurance salesman and, and sell you policies here, but I carry what's called an inland marine policy. So that in the event something does happen to my gear, I know I'm covered. These types of policies are pretty inexpensive. I believe through the North American Nature Photography Association, uh, I pay about $350 per year for my policy, but that is a complete coverage policy that no matter what I do to my camera, it's covered. And I have had an instance where I dropped a camera. Now, granted, you have that moment as the camera is falling in the water that you think all is lost and you can't believe you've just done what you did. But once you remember that you have that policy and that it's all covered, yeah, you may lose those images that are on the card and that camera, but you know you're covered. So having that is a great peace of mind, makes you more confident, and doesn't make you so timid having to go into that water. So before you get in there, make sure you're covered. Homeowner's policy is not always the best solution for covering your camera gear. You don't want losing a lens to end up getting the coverage canceled on your house. So it's really a good idea to separate those two things and keep that coverage separate. So 
enough about how to get ready to get into the water. Let's get into the water. As I said earlier, once we're out in the water, one of the most important things is to keep things low and slow. We don't want to take large lunging steps trying to climb over things or go too fast because that's a sure way to make yourself trip and fall. As I'm going through the water, I'm very deliberate, very carefully watching where I'm stepping if I can see where I'm going. Otherwise, I'm using my feet and my tripod to work my way through the water, using the tripod legs as a feeler. Now I'm using a, a Vanguard tripod. This is a carbon fiber. It's nice and light and I can feel as I'm moving through the water if my leg of my tripod bangs into something, I can feel that and that's something I can then avoid underneath. What I'm really looking for is either holes that I could step in, logs that I could trip over, and I'm also doing what's called the stingray shuffle, which is a uh, any of the coastal areas, you want to be aware that there's a lot of times uh, during the summer months in particular, the stingrays come in and they bury themselves under the sand. And if you step directly on top of them, you can get a spike up through the bottom of your foot. Nasty injury, not something you want to uh, have happen to you because you're going to end up in the emergency room and you're going to be limping around for a couple weeks. So instead of stepping directly down, what I want to do is just lift my foot slightly off the ground and drag it through the sand. What happens then if it hits any critters that are laying underneath the sand, it's going to kick them up and they're going to swim away so that you're not going to hurt yourself or them, which is the most important thing about being out here. Now as we're out here, it's really important to pay attention to the tides and the weather. In these coastal areas, tides are key, not only to finding wildlife, but also for you staying safe out here. So it's real important before you head out, check the tide charts and find out which way the tides are going. Are you going to have a very high tide, a very low tide? And at what point is that tide going to be changing? It's very easy to get caught up in what you're doing out here, get out on a sandbar and all of a sudden get stranded. Tides can be very dramatic in some areas. Uh, down here in Florida, we're only talking two or three feet change, but in some areas you may be talking a 10 to 20 foot tidal change. So you don't want to get somewhere and get stuck. Tides can also be very swift. Water's moving, and anytime water is moving, it can sweep you off your feet. Now, the tides out here are very gentle, but if you get into a situation where the tides are rapid, you can end up with a very rapid current that can really put you in a lot of trouble. The other thing I'm doing out here is taking a look around at the weather. Today we have a pretty cloudless day, but in Florida we can get thunderstorms really quick, and that can happen in a lot of parts of the country. So we want to keep an eye on the horizon. The moment you hear a rumble of thunder or you see any warning flags from lifeguards, get out of the water. Remember, it's going to take you longer to get out of the water because, again, we're moving slow. You can't run for cover from here. So the first sign that there may be any kind of a weather situation, get out of the water, go find some cover. Now, as for actually taking pictures out here, what I'm doing is looking for wildlife. And whatever opportunities I get, I'm going to slowly start to work my way in. Right now, you can see my, my tripod is up pretty high. As I find a subject, depending on how tall they are, how far away I am, I can start moving this down. Generally, I want to keep my, not worry about my bottom leg joints. I want to work with my top ones because I don't want to get my hands wet. And that's another important thing to keep in mind is that I always keep a dry rag in a, a closed pouch just in case I get my hands wet. I don't want to get salt water all over my gear. And also in case there's any splashes. I've had a few cases where mullet have jumped in front of me and splashed me in my gear. It happens, and, but having a dry rag on hand, you can get that, those splashes off real quick. We've covered the basics now of how to get out of the water and keep you and your camera safe. Really, again, the keys are, and I've said this over and over, is taking things slow. Make sure that every step you take is planned, that you're not rushing after your shots, that you're not getting yourself into a dangerous situation. Don't come out here unless you've got a clean bill of health. Make sure you're in physical shape, that you can handle sun, and if you have any questions, talk to your doctor. That's the person that can best tell you whether you're up for this or not. This isn't necessarily something for everybody, but once you get out here and you get comfortable, you can get some great opportunities that you're not going to get anywhere else. Well, that wraps up this video. Please visit OutdoorPhotoWorkshops.com or check us out on Facebook or Twitter for our other videos, articles, and our latest lineup of workshops all over the world with other OPW instructors and myself. Thanks, and be safe out there, and happy shooting.